I should have made this months ago when the first demo was out. But to you Frontsoft cultists, do you see this? What do I see? Your worst fear, and the one thing that Miyazaki is just so tone deaf about. Selectable difficulties. Such a common thing in video games, which I shouldn't have to be so happy about. But I am, thanks to Frontsoft. Team Ninja freaking learned from Neo 1 and 2. They learn that difficulty selection is not their enemy. They can cater to both the majority that enjoy fun, fairness, legitimate challenge, and the no life elitists that enjoy a fake challenge from the 80s. Those elitists have hard mode all to themselves, and Team Ninja didn't even stop there. There's a chaos mode on top of that at the beat in the game. Now, I was conflicted on whether or not to add this video in this fake challenge series of mine because it's the exact opposite of the fake challenge game design I hate. But because of that, it deserves to be here. It does what Frontsoft refuses to do. Easy mode is not a cakewalk like the Frontsoft cultists keep saying. And to prove that, in this video I'm showing an earlier level. Now because I played the second demo, I was able to upload my save so I can start where I left off. So I'm going back to an older level I already played and said level was just a Dark Souls 3 reference. No joke, that level had a ballista straight from Dark Souls 3's Smoldering Lake. That ballista gave me DS3 flashbacks. But Team Ninja were actually fair with it. There's a lot of hell to run through, but it's worth it in the end. There's a balance. A balance that apparently is too much to ask for from Frontsoft. I don't know how Namco Bandai puts up with them. <laughs> Money maker for them. As long as Frontsoft keeps catering to a minority, their games will never sell the huge amounts that I'm sure Namco Bandai wants but they certainly won't get that from FromSoft games. In fact, how many of those supposed millions from Elden Ring sales have returned their games by now because they're not masochists, hmm? Two other things to add is that for one, you can pause the game. Seriously, that's another common thing that FromSoft just doesn't do. And honestly, the one con in this game so far is that there's no map. Like, just no in-game map to check if the path you're doing is progress or not. Think this will open that door? Did the trick. Let's go. I bet this place is filled with secret rooms and hidden treasure. I wonder what riches the king of the dark hells is hoarding. Sneaky. Keep your eyes peeled, Jack. It's around here somewhere. Don't scream when it taps you on the shoulder. <laughs> Whatever doesn't kill you. Ah, 
is a win. Make this entertaining. Some cubes. Let's relax for a bit. Don't want to be on the receiving end of that. Look out! It's aiming at us! Hope it's good. Treasure, huh? Warm welcome. Be ready for me. Over there. Should we check it out?
that ballista. Man, this cactus Togemon motherfucker right here. <laughs> he was a bastard back in Final Fantasy 13. How can anyone not like that we can beat the absolute shit out of these motherfuckers? in this game and how come this toad motherfucker gets a peaceful death so far he's the toughest enemy in this So many fronts off quote unquote fans must be pissed right now. Do you see this? This is fairness. You dodge all that ballista fire. Then you show up at this point to the bonfire equivalent. That is a reward from going through that hell. You see how fair that is? We're not even at the best part of this yet. But you see this. Meanwhile, back in Dark Souls 3, if you went through that ballista in Smoldering Lake, you'd be beaten to hell. You'd be guaranteed to die. And if the enemy near the end killed you, you would have had to start that run all over. But you don't get that mess here. I think we could use that. Should we take a breather? This right here was just so satisfying. You could never do that in Dark Souls 3. Not only that, you get to beat the smack out of the bastard that was giving you trouble in the first place. That's another thing you couldn't do in Dark Souls 3. When you got to the blister in that, the giant that was manning it was already dead. I wonder if Team Ninja did this on purpose. I mean, referencing Dark Souls is one thing, but you get to destroy that reference. I don't know, that seems like Team Ninja flipping the bird of FromSoft.
back to business. That looks worth picking up. Lucky. This is the one. This is the one. Come on. Come on, follow me. Finally, a challenge. On your toes. Time for a change. Hmm. Wonder what's in there. This is that tower we saw. Time to explore.
I can't do this for much longer. We should probably take it easy. Now we've got an easy way back. Are we gonna go back or what? power is no joke. You think he might be the one? We need to make sure. Why not throw him at a badass monster? And I'd settle it quick. More of those cubes. I need a break.
I got nothing else to add. This game is a blast. I recommend it. In fact, if Square wants to go this route for every old Final Fantasy game, or just Final Fantasy 1 to 6, I'm on board. Especially if Team Ninja keeps making these. Like, please, more of this. Less of the fake challenge nonsense. Lastly, FromSoft really has no excuse. That fake challenge nonsense should be its own difficulty mode. This is 2022, not the 80s. Now, I'm not saying that mode should be removed or anything. You can keep that mode around. Just quit forcing it as the default. Then perhaps Elden Ring would actually deserve those 10 out of 10s.